Hi, I'm Bradley Tusk, founder of Tusk Ventures, and I'm gladly here today with The Real Deal to talk to you guys about SPACs. A SPAC, it stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation, and it's really, think about it almost as like someone raising a fund, but in the public markets instead of the private markets. So usually when you invest, um, you pick a company based on what you think they're doing and their prospects, and that's how you decide. In this case, someone comes to the market and says, look, I want to do X. If you back me, then I'll be able to do it, and it will go up in value, and you'll make money. So you're really betting on a person as opposed to a specific company. I don't know that it's even more ideal. It just can happen a lot sooner and faster um, because you're not expected to have a company that you're taking public. You're basically just taking public a concept and then saying, we're going to uh, find a company to buy or merge with in the sector. Um, it can happen very quickly, whereas an IPO, you know, you need to hit certain metrics in terms of how long you've been around for, revenue, growth, you know, different fundamentals. Um, and so it's just, it's kind of become a little bit of a, a new craze. It's, it's really a process where you say, okay, here are the kinds of companies that we might want to merge with. Um, you reach out to a lot of them, either, either directly or through bankers. Uh, people hear about your SPAC and they reach out to you. And through kind of a process elimination, you figure out who meets your needs best, who you add real value to, and uh, that's the deal. I mean, I think fundamentally still the, the vast, vast majority of real estate financing happens through traditional means. But look, if, if you are a developer and you want to seek different ways to be able to have you know, the capital to build your projects, then a SPAC is, is another logical solution. I think the one thing you have to understand with the SPAC is because you're merging with another company, you have to believe that there's a really good company that would want to merge with you, right? And that you add real value to. And just the fact that you raise a SPAC and that you have this money in and of itself isn't nearly enough. You've got to have something to really bring to the table. And I think those who don't, who are only doing it out of FOMO and only doing it because, you know, they think it's the cool thing to do, um, they're going to be the ones with trouble. You have real confidence either in the people running the SPAC or once the merger happens in the underlying company itself. It, it's not a magic bullet. So it's like, oh, I invest in a SPAC, I'm going to make 20% or whatever it is. It's like any stock. It might go up, it might go down, and you've got to have good reasons for why you're choosing it. Now, that may be based on the people who are running it and you have a lot of confidence in their track record and their abilities. It may be based on the company that they're merging with and you think that's a really undervalued and exciting company. So there are plenty of good reasons to do it, um, but you have to apply the same logic you would with anything else. It depends on whether you're investing before the merger or after. So if you're investing before, it's really based on the track record of the founders. Um, do they have a vision that you find compelling? Have they succeeded in the past? Are they the kind of people that can add real value to whatever company that they merge with so they can get a deal done? Um, if it's post merger, then it's really just like any other stock, which is, is this a company that we really think can grow? You know, keep in mind, IPOs are generally the beginning of something where you believe there's a significant growth trajectory ahead of you. If you see that and you believe in it, like, for example, some company is European and you're bringing it to the U.S. market or doing something that hasn't been done before and you think, hey, that's a really good idea, buy the stock. Um, but again, absent that, it, you shouldn't be doing it. I mean, I think number one would be if there's nothing particularly remarkable about the SPAC sponsors in the first place, right? If it's just like these are some, you know, relatively well-educated, smart people who are, you know, able to do this, like, so what, right? You know, th there's got to be something about you that really has some secret sauce. And if not, um, it, it's just, you know, because you went to Harvard or whatever, it doesn't really matter. That, that's not good enough. So that's number one. And then number two is really the quality of the company that you're merging with, right? If you're merging with something that really feels like kind of a desperate attempt to just complete some kind of deal, uh, there's a problem there and it's unlikely to really get fixed. Um, it's got to be a company that you think is fundamentally interesting and exciting and has real potential for growth. If you don't think that, don't invest.
Yeah, I mean, look, some are trading at high multiples without even having announced their merger yet. And that's purely speculative bets on the, the people running the SPAC. Um, others uh, go up a lot after the transaction because people are excited about it, sometimes way above what you would think the market value of these companies should be. But nonetheless, uh, people are excited about it anyway. Um, but actually, just in the, in the current moment, I think today is March 17, uh, SPACs have been taking a bit of a beating in the market lately, I think in part because there was so much exuberance uh, that people started to realize that it might be getting out of, out of hand. And so things are coming back down to earth. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what will happen is the market will shake out where probably six months ago, almost anybody going to the market was able to raise a SPAC and now there's some logic and reason again. And so if there's nothing about you that would really merit people betting on you and giving you $300 million or whatever the number is to go do something. Um, now, if you can't do it, it, it filters out the people who shouldn't be doing it and get to the people who are more likely to succeed, and then that restores uh, trust and confidence in the market. Thank you.